Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to our series on supply and demand. In the last two videos, we talked about this, the demand curve all by itself, the supply curve all by itself. And in this video, we're going to be putting them together, talking about the entire market, coming together, finding the equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, um, and start learning about how we actually take those demand curve shifters and those supply curve shifters and see how they affect the market um, once some, some event takes place. Okay, so let's jump in. We're going to talk about equilibrium when these two things come together. Our definition for equilibrium, and uh, a few of these next uh, definitions are going to be a little redundant, but uh, just stick, stick with me here. Um, just as I had uh, some abbreviations for quantity supplied and quantity demanded, I often will abbreviate equilibrium with this EQM. And equilibrium occurs when the price reaches a level such that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So when the price reaches a level such that quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. Okay, and let's look at that here on a supply and demand diagram where now we have both the supply curve and the demand curve coming together. Let's take some uh, arbitrary price, let's say P0. At this price, we can find, all right, at that price, here's the demand curve. That means this is the quantity demanded. Also at that price, that's the quantity supplied. So quantity demanded, quantity supplied, that price uh, is clearly not the equilibrium price uh, because these two things are not equal to each other. So let's look at the actual equilibrium, which in practice is just this intersection of supply and demand. So at this price, P star, we'll call it, we come over to the demand curve, and it's right there. We come over to the supply curve, and it's also right there. Therefore, this is our equilibrium quantity. That equilibrium quantity is equal to the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Okay, and so just to kind of formalize those, the equilibrium price is the price at, uh, that equates the quantity demanded and quantity supplied. We denote this with P star. And the equilibrium quantity is the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded at the equilibrium price. Uh, let's do at the equilibrium price. Okay, um, so let's look at that down here in this uh, example where we now actually have some numbers here. The equilibrium price is $3 and more or less the equilibrium quantity is $15. Okay. So that's putting it together. Uh, I do want to emphasize when we're talking about a change in supply versus a change in quantity supplied and same for demand, uh, there's a subtle but important difference between these two things. So a change in supply is a shift in the supply curve. So if we're talking about supply, it's the entire curve uh, itself. And these, these happen when we have any of those non-price determinants, supply curve shifters, right? Like technology, input costs, number of sellers, uh, the things we talked about in the last video. Change in quantity supplied is a movement along a fixed supply curve. And that happens when the price changes. Um, same thing for demand. So a shift in demand is the entire curve. A change in demand is a shift in the entire curve. 
again coming from our demand curve shifters a change in the quantity demanded is a movement along a fixed demand curve okay and that occurs when the price changes um, let me just uh, show you over here to the side what I mean by all of this if we take some market supply demand price quantity and we have our equilibrium price equilibrium quantity and let's say that this is the market for coffee and now let's say that there's an increase in the number of cafes okay so that's going to be an increase in supply supply increases if supply increases that's a shift of the entire curve uh, and in this case a shift to the right there's no increase in demand it's just a shift in the supply curve so here's our new equilibrium price P star 1 and Q star 1. <clears throat> because there are more cafes, the price has gone down. And as such, we are at a different point along the demand curve. We started here and we moved along the demand curve. And now we have a new quantity demanded, right? Because initially, remember, this equilibrium quantity is also the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. So this shift in supply, this increase in supply, increased the quantity demanded, but not the demand. The demand is the whole curve itself. So no increase in demand, but the quantity demanded increased as well as the quantity supplied because the entire equilibrium quantity increased. Okay, so supply increases, quantity demanded increases, and quantity supplied increase because the equilibrium quantity has gone up, but the demand curve, the demand has not gone up, just the quantity demanded. <clears throat> okay, so again, a little bit of a nuanced difference, but whenever we're talking about supply, we're talking about the entire curve. Whenever we're talking about demand, we're talking about the entire curve. Um, and then a change in the market, in this case, the price has gone down, moves the quantity demanded down along the curve. Okay, um, so again, a bit of a nuance there, um, but try to keep that in mind. Uh, and if you have questions about that, definitely feel free to write down in the comments and I'll, I'll try to explain even more. Okay, so now uh, we have equilibrium, we have this difference in, in thinking about shifts versus uh, movements along the curve, and really now we're going to be analyzing changes in equilibrium, and this is ultimately going to come down to shifts of the curves, depending on what event happens. So we have three steps. Um, we're going to talk about the first step is to decide is it a supply shift or demand shift or possibly both. Um, for most, most things, um, you should really be thinking about what's the primary direct effect, um, either supply or demand. Um, for our purposes with this lecture, if it's if it's both supply and demand, I'll be explicit about that. So is it supply or is it demand? Step two, is it an increase or a decrease? And then step three, you analyze the equilibrium to see what happens to P star and Q star. Okay, so let's, let's do that. <clears throat> and here we're gonna use the market for hybrid cars as our example. Hybrid cars using both gasoline and electricity. So here's the event. If there's a, an increase in the price of gas, so first we have to decide, is this a supply or demand 
shift. Um, and hybrid cars are substitutes for gas cars. Okay, and so if we're thinking about substitutes, we know this is going to affect demand. And in this case, if there's an increase in the price of gas, people are going to buy fewer gas cars and switch over to hybrid cars, uh, particularly if this gas increase is kind of a long-term uh, change. So increase in the price of gas, people move away from electric cars, and the demand for hybrid cars, which is the one we're looking at, the demand for hybrid cars is going to increase. And so let's see what, how that affects the market. So we start with P star zero and Q star zero, and we have an increase in demand. So remember, an increase in demand is a shift of the entire curve. Uh, it doesn't matter how far out we move it. We could move it just a little bit and draw a curve there. We could draw it out a far way, um, but whatever we do, we just want to shift the curve to the right because a, a rightward shift is an increase in demand. And with that, we can kind of ignore this first demand curve and we just find this new intersection between the supply curve and the demand curve, which happens up here. So um, no change in supply, so the supply curve is the same. And we find that equilibrium price where uh, quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal to each other. Oops. Okay, and that's P star 1. And that's the quantity there, Q star 1. Okay, so here we have an increase in the quantity and an increase in the price. All right, so that's the answer to the last part of this. Price increases, quantity increases. So if there's a, an increase in the price of gas, this would potentially increase the price of hybrid cars and increase the quantity of hybrid cars in the market. Okay, so that's our demand side increase. Let's look at a supply supply side increase. <clears throat> in this case, a new technology reduces the cost of producing hybrid cars. So if it's cheaper to produce, more suppliers are going to want to get in on that, and the people already producing are going to want to supply more. So this is a supply curve increase. Any, any kind of cost reduction is always going to increase supply. And again, let's analyze that. Get our initial conditions. And it's a, an increase in supply. So an increase shifts the supply curve to the left. Uh, sorry, to the right. Increase in supply shifts the curve to the right. And again, it doesn't matter how far. Um, we're just going to go there. And again, we find that new intersection between supply and demand. That gives us the equilibrium, new price, new quantity, and this new technology is going to end up reducing the price of hybrid cars and increasing the quantity. So more cars in the market at a lower price. Price goes down, quantity goes up. Okay, um, so a demand curve change, a supply curve change, and actually for this last bit, we're going to look at both. So same scenarios, gas, in, gas price goes up, technology makes it cheaper to produce, and we're going to see what happens if both of those things happen simultaneously. So first step, we know it's both supply and demand. Second step, we already know both increase. And the third step, I'm going to show you, but basically... Uh, it depends. Whenever there's uh, an increase or a decrease in both curves, it's going to have some ambiguous effect on the outcome. And in this case, it's going to have an ambiguous effect on the price. And it depends on which curve increases by more. So 
If demand increases by more than supply, let's look at that. And again, start at our initial. Initial equilibrium there. And we're going to increase supply and demand, but we're going to say in this first case, demand increases by more than supply. So we want a big increase in demand and a relatively small increase in the supply curve. So a little increase in the supply, big increase in demand, and now we analyze this new equilibrium here. We get P star 1, Q star 1. And because the demand effect dominates, the price increases and the quantity increases. So price goes up. Maybe. Uh, let me see. Let me just restart this real quick. <clears throat> oh, okay. It was writing in the background somehow. But yes, the price goes up. And the quantity also goes up because that demand effect dominates. Okay. Uh, let's look at the case where supply increases by more than demand. Okay, so there's our initial equilibrium, P star, Q star, and we're going to increase supply and demand again, but this time, instead of a big increase in demand, we'll have a small increase in demand, so a small rightward shift, but a big rightward shift in supply. And so our new equilibrium is down here, where we still have an increase in the quantity. But this time, because the supply effect dominates, there's now a decrease in the market price for the hybrid cars. Okay, so supply increases by more than demand. Price will go down on this ambiguous effect on price. Um, but the quantity, regardless, is still going to go up. So again, anytime you're having some multiple changes, you should um, be really careful about how big you make the, the size of these shifts um, because it'll definitely have a, a big, it can have a substantial impact on, on the outcome. Okay, <clears throat> so that is it for the... Uh, basic mechanics of supply and demand. And again, ultimately, tying this back to the first chapter a few videos back, it is through the market and ultimately through the price system that guides our economic decisions and kind of facilitates these interactions between buyers and sellers. Um, so now that we have the mechanics down, we're going to use supply and demand to talk about a few macroeconomic ideas, um, things like price floors and price ceilings and applying these to things in the labor market, things like minimum wage um, and macroeconomic policies, things like rent ceilings as well. So uh, that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks.